Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're looking at measuring the theoretical ferry range of the F5E Tiger II. I'm quite excited about this. The F5E is just something a bit different from what we've been doing and I'm genuinely interested. I have no idea if it's going to be a high ferry range or a low ferry range. On the plus side, it can carry a relatively high amount of fuel for its you know, kind of overall size. And it's got tiny, weedy, weedy little engines, so the burn rate can't be that high. So anyway, we'll just get on with it. So far, what we know is that it takes 400 pounds of fuel for an approach and landing. Uh, the total amount of fuel it can carry with it, its ferry configuration, i.e. the biggest fuel tanks it can carry, is just under 10,000 pounds of gas. Uh, the test should be 50% of that, but because just the way DCS is set up, the nearest I can get is 5,368 pounds for the cruise test. Uh, the fog, fuel on ground for this aircraft, we're putting it as super light, so that's going to be 720 pounds of fuel on ground, and that's all we've got at the moment. So, with that in mind, we'll go ahead into DCS. Uh, as for predictions, I'm not even going to make any predictions, everything I predict is wrong uh, anyway. So, oh, uh, other stipulations, we're going to do the tests at 20k, not 32k. We do attack planes at 20k, we do modern powerful fighters at 32k uh, it just works don't ask me why because i don't really know the physics physics behind it it works so the, the fighter the big fighter planes just get their best their optimal fuel rate within reason around this here and the attack planes which i'm including the fiv because uh, i'm almost certain this will be true as well get their top around about 20k asl okay uh let's jump in and start getting some data Okay, we're in now. So the first thing we need to do is get the FIV. We need to do the takeoff and climb to cruise. We need to see how much distance that takes and how much fuel it takes. Now, this is a problem because the fuel gauge, the cockpit fuel gauge, only shows the internal fuel, not the external fuel. And most of this aircraft's fuel is external. Uh, so that's a problem. Uh, so we're going to have to think outside the box here. My best suggestion is that we remove the fuel because we've got to simulate a fully loaded plane here. It's the idea of what we're doing um, in terms of ferry loading. I think we should probably replace it with bombs and rocket pods. Roughly the same drag kind of coefficient as these uh, fuel three fuel tanks here and ensure that we get the same weight because uh, weight is drag at the end of the day as well. So with the full fuel here our total weight is 21,560. Let me write that down. So we've now got to uh, try and duplicate that. Let's see what happens. Oh, we've already uh, about rockets. What's the biggest ones? Any of these? Uh, okay, that's not too bad. That is within. 150 pounds of what we had before. We might even be able to get a sidewinder on there. That is now within. That's 32 pounds different. So that is that is the, now the same poundage as what we had with the three tanks. Uh, now the drag coefficient is going to be different with these two uh, two three tanks, obviously, but it's as close as I can get. And the majority of the drag that the stores create is not actually the stores themselves. Uh, well, this isn't always true, but this is this is a heavy factor. Hefty factor is not just the, dra the drag that the stores create, it's the fact that the extra weight causes that much extra angle of attack of the aircraft. Uh, so that will be simulated perfectly, or, you know, within 30 pounds. Um, right, so that's that. Happy with that now. So what I can do now is on, on eternal fuel only, so that's 4,511 pounds, I need to see how far I can, uh, how much fuel I need to burn to get up to cruise altitude. So let's save it there. Okay, we're in the cockpit now. The first thing to do is decide how accurate this fuel gauge here is. We have to, uh, you know, ensure that it's accurate. Now, the actual amount of fuel in this aircraft right now is, I should say, I've turned fuel burn on as well for this, obviously is 4,511 pounds. And this is showing uh, 2,000. 485 plus uh, 1,975. If I add them together, I'll get 4,460. So this is off by 50 pounds. This is showing 50 pounds shy. So what I'll do when I uh, get the final readout, so I'll make a small adjustment to ensure that it's perfectly accurate. Uh, that's that. I uh, can't think of anything else. We've burnt a couple of pounds sitting here, but it's not enough to worry about. The nose dries up. 
Flaps are automatic. It's probably going to be the most realistic thing we would do. Let's get on with it. In terms of our climb profile, we're just going to do something that feels right for an average ferry. We're not going to use the afterburner. Uh, we're going to climb at about 250 knots. Uh, if I can remember how to fly this thing at all. Here we go. Uh, IAS. At whatever pitch we get about 250 knots at. And that's about it, really. Right, where's our speed? There it is. Uh, rotate. Oh, she's a heavy old bird. She's a heavy old bird. One thing I've just realised that we're not simulating is that the uh, weight of the fuel is going to get lower, obviously. Uh, whereas the weight of our payload is not going to be getting lower. For this, just for this first bit, for this uh, climb, so that is a big enough to go after burner. We're just not powerful enough. Gear up. No choice about that. Too much alpha on at the moment. Probably come off now. Um, so we're not going to simulate that reduction in fuel load. Uh, does it really matter? Not really. Just for the climb, I don't think it's. it's yeah, it doesn't really matter enough. Right, we just need to get our speed up before we do the climb. Sort the trim out, we're a bit lopsided. As soon as our alpha gets around six degrees, we'll be we'll be slippery as a bullet, we'll be fine. Now lovely little aircraft, isn't she? Up we go, sir. Where's our ADI? Where's our ADI? There it is. Okay. We're doing a pretty decent climb, we've got to pitch ten degrees. She is a, she's a slick little bird when she wants to be. Uh, near enough. Actually turned out to be a real struggle to get up here. It's just not a good climber, is it? Got to have your burners on. But it would just be so bad for fuel that I don't think it would be worth even trying. So, I just want to make sure I'm not actually burning on afterburner. I don't think I was. No, here. And the fuel rate there is pretty good, so I'm pretty happy with that. So, uh, the distance we travelled was a lot. And that's not a bad thing. If the distance is high, it doesn't matter. It's... Um, if anything, I can, I can actually help the, the, the max ferry range. So it's, uh, it's 99 nautical, so I need to convert that to miles at some point. That's okay. And the amount of fuel burnt is... Ba -ba. So that there is 10, 11, so it's 1070 on this tank. 1070 pounds. Plus uh, on this tank we have burnt 1665. 1665. So we've got 1070 plus 1665 uh, in the tank. Right, let's go and report that back. Okay, all done. Next we need to go and work out the cruise fuel burn rate. So, but uh, mission editor. Okay, so for our uh, cruise guy, we've got this guy here, 20,000 feet. I'm not going to click on him because I'll upset him. He's got three tanks on, but his fuel is drained such that he's got 5,300 pounds or whatever it was in the sheet, which is the best we can get. Um, we need to turn fuel burn off for this. Unlimited fuel there. Save that, and let's go. Annoyingly, we have no autopilot, so it's all gonna have to be manual flying uh, with this aircraft, so let's get back up, let's get trimmed. In fact, we're just gonna quickly check we've got our bags on and everything. Yep, we've got everything, we've got our fuel burn uh, meter down there. So 20,000 feet, let's get stable at 20,000 feet at Try 250 to begin with. Okay, just using our VSI now to keep us level. It's proved very hard to get this plane down to 250, so we're just going to do it at 275. It's just the nearest I can get at the moment. Uh, let's get that fuel burn. So both engines are on 16, 10, 16, 10 pounds per hour. Which it turns out is actually amazingly high. That's as uh, 
That's as much as some of the big jets. So we're burning really inefficiently at the moment. Let's just double check everything. Temps, green, RPMs, 90%. Nozzle positions are closed, so we're not an afterburner. Uh, oil pressure, fuel quantity. Yeah, it's right, times a thousand pounds per hour. Um, so as it stands, like this, it's burning incredibly inefficiency, inefficient for crews. Alpha is low, so I don't know what it is that make, is making it so inefficient. I guess just crappy engines. Remember that a small engine doesn't necessarily mean a fuel efficient engine. Okay, I'm going to try going up to 300. It seems to want to go fast, these engines, so let's try going up to 300. This may take a while. This plane flies really weird, but anyway, three... 300 close as I can get it to be static and level and whatnot. Uh, we've got a burn of mm, not much more, so probably actually quite efficient. So 300 knots, IAS, there's a burn rate of 1690 pounds per hour per motor. Uh, that makes me want to push it to 325, so maybe one of these planes that just does better faster. Uh, simply because of alpha, weight, blah, 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 blah. Right, let's, uh, let's push it. Okay, we seem to be holding there. Uh, tiny bit off. Okay, that's holding there enough. 325. We've got a burn rate of 16, 17, 18. 17, 80 pounds per hour per motor. Okay, we'll try 350. Okay. Just got a bag of, just a bag of 350 there. But level on the VSI, it's about as good as I can hold it. So 350 is 19. 60 pounds per hour per motor. So it's gone and got all inefficient now. So let's duck down to the 250 knots if we can get this biatch down here. Alright, it's as close as I can get to 250 knots stable. And we're at a fuel burn rate of pretty much 1500 pounds per hour per engine. Okay, let's see if we can get down, down to two, uh, 225. Okay, 225. It's, it's almost impossible to operate down here. The engines aren't linear at all like a modern fighter. They have several stages, to jump between stages is, well, go and fly in F5 and try and do this and you'll see what I mean, but it's pretty much impossible. In fact, the fuel rate, burn rate is going up here uh, just because of how the weird way the engines work. So 225, the nearest I can get is gonna be, what, this, uh, it's about 15, 80 per, 15, 80 pounds per hour per engine. And they're getting less efficient now because of the way the engines, the, the, we're kind of in between stages at the moment on the engines. Go and report that, and we shall report back to the data. Okay, welcome back. Let's go through the raw data. So, 225 knots. Okay, IAS, the F5E does 3160. So, 31, whoops, 160 divided by miles per hour is 428 equals 7.383 pounds per mile. 7.383 is pretty much the same as an A10C. Uh, okay, um, surprisingly bad, really is surprisingly bad, but that's how it is, you know. Um, at 250 knots KIS 3000 divided by 472 miles per hour equals 6.356 6, 6 pounds per mile. That is, for instance, a lot worse than a Mirage. Is that realistic? Don't know. Next is 3220 divided by 515 miles per hour equals 6.252. 6.252. So it's getting more efficient as we get faster. Uh, a bit like the Harrier did. Uh, so this is now 3390 divided by 557 equals uh, something that went wrong. 3390 divided by 557 equals 6.086. 6.086. Okay, so we're getting more and more efficient. Uh, we're up to 325. I'm uh, going to have to do a little bit. So that is 557 uh, five, divided by 300 times 325 equals. 603, 603, and this is going to be uh, divided by 325 times 
graphs here. Why don't we have, in that case, 3560 divided by 603 equals, getting quite efficient now, 59, uh, 5904, 5.904 uh, pounds per mile. And what was this last one? I think it starts getting in inefficient again, 3920 divided by 650. Uh, equals 6.031 6.031 there so our most efficient is here at three same as the Harrier at uh, 325 knots KIAS that's our most efficient let's update our little baby here so the F5 is b -b -b there because ah the shit the chart only goes up to there well eh, near enough up to 300 knots kis anyway you see the f5 is there so you see how different it is to everything else apart from the harrier which is quickly pretty similar to uh no the ags vegan sorry and the harrier is very similar to but the harrier is just very inefficient of course so for whatever reasons the f5 the ags and the uh how the harrier like to cruise fast remember the vegan that was done at 32,000. i put 20k in here that's wrong because i'm a silly boy so the big one was actually done at 32,000. Need to be doing to 20,000. Right, uh, that's the raw data done. Now let's go and plug in and do the summary. So we've got 5.094 in there. So that gives us a takeoff pounds of that. That gives us a landing of that. Total takeoff to cruise distance of that. Total pounds carried of that. Total pounds tested as that and cruise. Total fog of that, total cruise pounds there, total cruise miles it can do there, which is best, not that bad actually, and a total ferry range, including uh, landing fog, including landing, including takeoff and cruise of nearly 1500 miles. Actually, it can go further than an FA18C. So, let me say that again a F5E with four bags on. And go and check through the video to see if I've made any mistakes, but I think that was all done correctly. Can go can vary further, 100 miles further than an FA18C. How interesting. Right, so that's it. Uh, I'd like to do the MiG-21 and redo the Vigan at a more sensible altitude for its class. And um, that's all. I hope that was useful and see you later.